Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains, And today we're taking a look at two tech stocks and AI bets to consider buying at bargain prices amid the wider market sell-off. And those two tech stocks are Cadence Design Systems and Vertiv Holdings, which trades in the ticker C. CDNS, and then Vertiv is VRT. But before we get into everything, remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you're listening to your podcast, and make sure to check out our zax.com slash promo page for a look into some of our services, portfolios, and more. So before we jump into Cadence and Vertiv, it's worth just quickly going over where the broader market is at the moment, because the broader market and the tech-driven sell-off is the reason why we're looking at two of these stocks today which I think are sitting at some bargain prices, especially for long-term investors. So we saw Wall Street buy up the first major dip on Tuesday, uh, and the market could be headed for more volatility and choppiness in the days and weeks ahead. So on Wednesday, we saw then the market give up its early gains to have the NASDAQ close about 1.1% lower. And then buyers came right back in on Thursday. I'm recording this roughly midday Thursday. And as I'm recording this, the NASDAQ's up about 2.4% with the S&P 500 up around 1.8%. So we're seeing some choppiness recently. And some investors are worried possibly that there's a larger sell-off around the corner. The problem is trying to time the market exactly is exceedingly difficult even for hedge funds run by mathematicians with PhDs using sophisticated algorithmic proprietary trading platforms. So that's just to say that the NASDAQ has already cooled off a ton. Uh, It slid from heavily overbought RSI levels over the last five years back in July to some of its most oversold levels over the last five years. The CNN Fear and Greed Index, which is a really good kind of contrarian indicator when it gets to extreme fear, that's a good time to buy. When it gets to extreme greed, it's a good time to sell, possibly, if you're more of a trader. And we're now sitting in the extreme fear zone at the moment of that index or indicator, which is a good sign. So the NASDAQ 200 day has been the level that the bulls are trying to hold at the moment, which is sort of near those 2021 peaks, so those previous highs from before the 2022 downturn. Uh, It's held a few times, including Tuesday and now on Thursday. And if the 200-day breaks, maybe Wall Street bulls start to hold that 50-week moving average, which is not too much farther from here. So no matter what happens in the near term, the best long-term investors should start buying stocks, their favorite stocks now. And if they go down a little bit more, you buy a little bit more. But it's really hard to try to time the market and look for the exact bottom because who knows we could have already reached it and then you're three weeks from now you're sitting here thinking oh why didn't i at least dip my toes into a few of these stocks uh as we could be headed for a, a big pullback or a big a big rebound and no one as i said exactly knows but we've gone from heavily overbought and really overheated in the last few months to sitting at some levels that longer term investors, as you say, should be relatively comfortable with buying if you're thinking five years down the line or maybe even five months down the line. So with that, we're going to take a look uh, at two of these tech stocks that are also broader AI plays that are thinking are sitting at some attractive entry points in terms of price and evaluation and some of their uh, moving averages as they interact with a few of those. So the first of those two stocks we're looking at is Cadence Design Systems which trades in the ticker CDNS. So Cadence Design Systems modeling and computational software helps companies design chips and other vital technologies, enabling the likes of NVIDIA and others to simulate semiconductors before they are made. Cadence stock has skyrocketed over 1,400% in the last 10 years. This crushes the Zacks tech sector, which is up about 270% blows away the likes of Taiwan Semi and plenty of other massive tech and chip standouts. Yet, Cadence stock is now trading 20% below its highs, with it trying to find some support at some key long-term moving averages. So let's dive in to the stock and then see why it might be worth buying at the moment. So the basics are the growing complexity of semiconductors needed for AI, hyperscale computing, and beyond have transformed Cadence into an invaluable partner for many and a vital part of the broader 
semiconductor ecosystem. The company provides investors the chance to buy into the bo- booming world of AI and semiconductors. And more importantly, it's poised to benefit from the expansion of AI and the ongoing expansion of high-end semiconductors, cutting-edge semiconductors, really no matter who the long-term winners are in the space, since Cadence is one of only a few players in the vital electronic design automation world. Cadence ended 2023 with a record backlog and deeper partnerships with the likes of NVIDIA and ARM. With that said, the company's earnings revisions have trended downward uh, over the last few months since its last report. Its Q3 estimate is down about 10%, so that's a big reason the stock has fallen. Overall, though, its estimates are up from where they were this time last year, so the stock's already been punished for a little bit of uh, near-term uh, negative revisions for its earnings. So if we look overall, we're calling for roughly 13% revenue growth in 2024, and then another 13% revenue growth in 2025 to go from about 4.1 billion in 2023 to over 5.2 billion in 2025. And then on the bottom line, we're calling for an impressive 14% adjusted earnings growth this year, and then 18% growth next year. So that's solid growth, even though the estimates have trended a little bit in the wrong direction recently. And it's worth noting that the top line growth of 13% both this year and next follows about 15% growth last year, 19% growth in 2022, and then roughly 11% growth in 2021. So the continuation of solid, low double digit revenue growth is what we're expecting in the next few years. The company also has a pretty solid balance sheet and it operates in a key business, as I said. So this is why it might start getting some bites. And with that said, the stock was up 5% as it record this midday Thursday, which still puts it about 30% below its average X price target and still 20% below its June highs. So at the moment, the stock is trying to find some buyers after it fell below its 50-week uh, moving average for the first time since the end of 2022. So that could be a long-term moving average to, to pay attention to as it buyers are trying to step in here where it's sitting at some of its most oversold RSI levels over the last decade, if we're looking at it on a, a 10-year time frame. And it's now trying to find some, as I said, some support near that 50-week. It is trading well below that 200 uh, day moving average, but it's trying to find some support here. And as I said, it's up about 5% as record this on Thursday as it bounces out of its most oversold RSI levels on a one year time frame just recently. So obviously with some of that growth and the, the huge performance, some people might e- expect that it's not really a value stock. It's trading at 47 times forward 12 and earnings versus tech, which is trading at about 24.6 times. That said, compared to itself, it's trading at a 35% discount to its 10-year highs and not too far above its median, highlighting that Wall Street's been willing to pay up for its long-term consistent growth in a key area for a very long time, and it looks like they're continuing to do that. So overall, of the 13 brokerage recommendations that Zacks has, 10 are sitting at strong buys with one buy and two holds. So there's no sells here overall for Cadence. And it certainly looks like it might be worth investors getting in on the stock now as it still trades way below its all-time highs. And it's trying to find some support at that 50-week moving average. And its valuation's now been recalibrated to account for those little bit of negative earnings revisions recently. And now we're going to move on to Vertiv, which trades in the ticker VRT. It transformed from a relatively, and it still is relatively under the radar, tech stock into one of the AI darlings over the last two years. Vertiv stock is still up 475% over the last two years, which is not too far below NVIDIA, which is up about 500%. And this is with these massive downturns recently. So it's currently trading. VRT is trading about 34% below its highs. Thankfully, it's attempting to find support at that 200-day moving average. So we're going to jump in to a little bit more of the basics and then go ahead and look, close out with uh, its valuation and some of its technical levels. So Vertiv's power, cooling, and IT infrastructure solutions and services operate across data centers, communication networks, and beyond. It's partnered with the current king of AI, NVIDIA, to help solve the future of data center efficiency and cooling challenges. And better yet, Vertiv will grow sort of like Cadence along the AI supercycle, no matter who comes to dominate the industry, since it's 
kind of working in the background helping these these systems operate. Vertiv grew its Q2 organic orders by 57%, and this was the quarter that it reported in late July, July 24th, with those orders up 37% on a trailing 12-month basis. And when it reported, it raised its 2024 sales guidance and its operating profit outlook. The company also said it's on track to reach its long-term target of 20% plus adjusted operating margin. And its CEO noted that they're continuing to see the scaling of AI development helping Vertiv in really pivotal places. Uh, it said Vertiv is the connective tissue between IT and it facilitates uh just this broader growth that we're going to see from AI going forward and just how much computing power needed. They're, they're kind of going to be there on the back end of all of that as we see data centers explode around the country and the world in the coming years and possibly decades to fuel this AI boom that everyone is so excited about. So with that, looking at its growth, we're calling for roughly 13% growth, just like Cadence, roughly 13% growth in 2024 and then 13% growth in 2025. So really consistent top line growth to take it from about 6.9 billion in 2023, all the way up to about 8.7 billion in 2025. And then on the bottom line, we're calling for an impressive 46% adjusted earnings growth this year, and then another 30 or 28% adjusted earnings growth next year. So really solid bottom line growth as well to go with that impressive top line growth. And then the company, since its most recent report in late July, its earnings revisions have trended higher for all of it, the periods, including 2024 and 2025, with its 2024 outlook up about 7%, with its 2025 consensus up 6% since then. Its improved outlook helps it earn a Zach's rank number one strong buy at the moment, and it's worth noting it pays a small dividend. And Wall Street's really high in the stock with all 11 brokerage recommendations that Zacks have, excuse me, that Zacks has reverted of coming in at strong buys. So now back to some of the price performance and technical levels, and then we'll get into some valuation as well. The stock is still up 45% year to date and roughly 480% over the past two years, yet it's down 34% from its highs and trading 53% below its average Zacks price targets or 53% below that price target that we have on average at Zacks. And as I record this on Thursday afternoon, it's trying to march right back up above that 200 day moving average, which it fell below for the first time in all of 2024 just recently. So it's now sitting at some heavily oversold RSI levels. And as I said, it's up uh, about 4.5% as I record this, trying to march right back above that 200 day moving average, which it fell below for the first time this year, not too long ago. It's also finding support uh, right near its 50-week moving average, which uh, they're, they're kind of coinciding at the, the same level. It's also now trading at a 9% discount to tech in terms of valuation at 22.3 times forward 12-month earnings and at a 45% discount to its own highs and near its median over the last three years. This is despite that impressive performance during this time that's outpaced tech and fallen not too far behind NVIDIA. And then its peg ratio, which factors in its longer-term earnings growth outlook, marks a 50% value to the broader tech sector. So that just shows that bottom-line improvement that Wall Street's so excited about in terms of uh, Vertiv and how its ability to be kind of a picks-and-shovels AI stock that's set to continue to grow uh, both its top and bottom line in the near term and the long term. So Vertiv and Cadence are both stocks that are worth considering, trading well off their highs as these big tech bets and uh, larger plays into the AI future. And it's always worth remembering, just no one can call the exact market bottom, but the best time for long-term investors to buy stocks is after big pullbacks. And if they pull back a little bit more after you buy them, if you're confident in the stock and you're going to be in these for a really long time, then you just buy a little bit more because the worst thing you can do is sit in your hands, sit in your hands, sit in your hands, waiting for the exact bottom. And then all of a sudden, three months from now, the stock's up 20% and back at all time highs or something like that. So certainly worth considering both Vertiv and Cadence as we uh, are in this bigger market downturn with a lot of volatility at the moment. And that does it for this episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over podcast at zax.com.
This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.